Below the awe-inspiring undercliff bordering the southern coastline of the Isle of Wight sits Ventnor's Botanical Gardens. A garden of reflective tranquillity overlooking the English Channel, with its own microclimate, curated plants from around the world, and weathered structures and memorials hinting an intriguing past. Dig a little deeper and you'll see how these peaceful gardens hold their secrets so well. Concealing the tortured echoes of the 19th century tuberculosis epidemic. In 1882, the infectious bacterial disease tuberculosis was officially recognised as a contagious disease. It didn't take long to take hold throughout much of Europe and North America. A respiratory disease signified by fits of bloody coughing, fever and weight loss, with a terrifyingly high mortality rate. Curiously enough, despite the frightening odds of succumbing to the disease, writers and poets of the era would be responsible for romanticising tuberculosis in the eyes of the public across Europe the White Plague, as it was dubbed, being seen as a rather spiritual and dignified end due to the slow and progressive deterioration of patients. This was by no means a nice way to die, but in the 1800s there were a lot less favourable alternatives. Historian Roy Porter wrote to the disease's public perception. Bright young things, seeking public attention, positively sought to look tubercular, as if delicacy and a tenuous grasp on life made them all the more appealing. In reaction to its intense and widespread transmission, sanatoria were erected across Europe, which brings us to Ventnor's old Royal National Hospital. The hospital was opened in 1869, with its location being selected by founder Arthur Hill Hassel due to its natural beauty. So at the time it was understood that sunlight and fresh air were the most effective treatments for TB. Designed by architect Thomas Hellyer, the hospital was made up of eight blocks or cottages with each patient having their own room in an attempt to limit exposure to one another. More than 100,000 patients were treated behind the doors of the sanatorium. While many were able to be cured, the experimental nature of treatment due to the rudimentary understanding of the disease resulted in the slow, agonising death of so many. As the years rolled on, advancements in the use of antibiotics and hygiene practices largely brought TB under control with cases dramatically decreasing into the 1900s, rendering many of the sanatoria, including the Royal National Hospital, redundant. Unfit for purpose, the hospital was closed in 1964, demolished five years later. As is the case with many hospitals, rumours of hauntings were commonplace while the facility was operational, though it would be the demolition in 1969 that appeared to upset the resident spirits trigger an influx of paranormal phenomena. While levelling the building, workers would report a feeling of being watched and a sense of unease, compounded by the apparition of a sickly young girl. With defined gaunt facial features and a spectral outline, she would appear to curiously observe workers and once noticed would disappear. The old operating theatre proved to be a hotbed of activity, stubbornly resisting mechanical destruction Inexplicable malfunctions and damage to equipment halted progress, and workers reluctantly resorted to sledgehammers to finally tear down the remains of the theatre. Disembodied moaning and sobbing could often be heard coming from the operating theatre, so much so that local residents would constantly complain of hearing the ghostly cries emanating from the area through the night. Nowadays the Venter Botanical Garden sits on the plot, bring a sense of peace to land that witnessed so much trauma. And though the main hospital buildings are long gone, you still find the remains of infrastructure from the time. A handful of pavilions and stone structures stand as reminders of the ground's original purpose. From the ocean you can make out the crumbling remnants of the old waste tunnel, running from the garden through the cliffside directly to the ocean. This brings us to the spirits that also remain on the grounds to this day. Apparitions of nurses in 19th century uniform have been spotted, still working thanklessly caring for their patients. Also reported as spectres of several sickly patients wandering the gardens, accompanied by the sound of moaning and groaning, as well as disembodied fits of coughing. As well as visual apparitions and audible phenomena, 
From time to time, the smell of medical waste is reported coming from the abandoned tunnel, which has laid untouched for all this time. If you subscribe to the idea that the paranormal phenomena are attached to the material of the hospital itself, it might not surprise you to know that much of the demolished hospital buildings are still here, below the gardens, the rubble of which was used to fill in the below-ground tunnels and basements back in the 60s. If you find yourself on the Isle of Wight, it's certainly worth a visit. It's a beautiful location, particularly set against the backdrop of its importance to British healthcare during a dark time in human history. You might even catch a glimpse of a spectre still wandering the grounds, waiting for the cure that they'd never receive.